welcome back, guys, to the So Much More podcast. I'm Evelyn, and my handsome co-host is... Rolly Vogues. And our special guest today is... Jay Franco. <laughs> Jay Franco. Jay Franco on the podcast. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. So tell us what you do and what you're here to talk about and everything. So, so a little bit of what I do, and I think what I'm mostly known for is my apparel business. Ultimately, what we focus on is all things custom apparel and um, basically through the methods of screen printing and embroidery. And um, throughout the years, we've become very popular and known for getting a bunch of big accounts. And that's my main focus, I guess, but people don't really know I'm all around just a full-time hustler. Whatever I can get myself into, I do. And ultimately, I am a serial entrepreneur because I actually have multiple businesses in which I'm about to start a new one and people don't even know this, but I actually do have a real estate development company as well. That I'm working okay. on. Yeah. I think, I think I saw you post that one time. Yes, I think yeah. you talked about it a little bit on your stories. Yeah. I jumped the gun on that one just a little bit, but it's definitely in the works. I'm very far along, but I don't want to talk about this project or really show too much of it until I start construction which is actually going to be very, very soon. Okay, okay. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah, it's a big deal. And honestly, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking about like a lot of money. This is my biggest investment in my entire life. Really? Yo, that's yeah. so crazy. Cause, so so for those of you that don't know, like I was an employee under Apparel Up. Um, was I like one of the first? Like You were. I think you were one of the first ones. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy. So pretty much like I've seen you and your brother, Jerry, pretty much like start a not a start the whole business but work the business up you know mm -hmm. and just to see where you guys both of y'all where y'all are at now is just crazy you know what i mean so yeah I, i'm so glad you were yeah. like able to witness it um there's been a couple too that have witnessed uh just all of our growth but there's a lot of people that just see where the now yeah. yeah and they're like oh you know J. Franco or Apparel Up. Now they know the name. Now they see the logo everywhere, which is really cool. But now I'm just glad that people can learn a little more about me and just the beginning of it and all that I actually do. And overall, how many businesses do you have? So mine personally is three. Um, but like I said, also with that, I mean, again, all time hustler. I mean, I'm talking about anything that I can kind of make some money off i will like for yeah. instance like purses i will buy a really nice collectible purse that is very limited i keep it for myself i have some fun with it but then i go off and resell it for a little more once i get bored mm. jerry does the same thing now with like rolexes like watches yeah because now like he has kind of gained the respect um from i guess rolex like it's kind of like hermes you know or hermes like you need to be like an active like uh, customer client in order to get invited to purchase a purse. It's the same thing with Rolex. Like if you actually keep your watch, mm -hmm. if you go in there and they see that you actually wear it and you still have it for so many years, like you get invited to purchase more watches. So oh, then he goes off and sells it. Like he can literally go buy a watch and then resell it and make like eight grand really quick. Yeah. Damn, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's Damn, another that's thing that we do. Like right now we're about to buy this like Panda Rolex for like 40 grand. And uh, we're, we put the money together because you have to pay for it. Yeah. Like a pan. And then we go off and resell it and make like a quick $8,000. Damn, that's So again, wild. all around, like people don't even know yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing, like say we want to go to a concert, we'll buy a whole suite. And we'll resell okay, all the tickets. Okay, y'all do that a lot, right? Yeah, like, we yeah. do a bunch of stuff. But between me and my brother, it's just like, hey, you just got to have a lot of, you know, money to, to invest. Yeah. And you get into a bunch of stuff. And I think ultimately being an entrepreneur, that's just what it is. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So uh, a while ago, I posted on Instagram talking about like the fake it till you make it thing. I had, okay. see, I had seen somebody like talk on their Instagram or their something. Something happened that caused me to talk about it. And how I was like, man, you know, people who who fake the stuff or whatever kind of like ticks me off or whatever. But 
but then you were the one of the ones that i like, know the whole conversation yeah, yeah. i replied to your story <laughs> i was trying to get you to like understand for, yeah. get a different which perspective. was a different perspective yeah. yeah so and it worked you know so talk about that a little bit like how did you use that for your business yes yeah so this is a topic that i love and people don't even realize it but there's been very very successful people who have faked it until they made it yeah. and today um i was listening to a podcast brian serhant from a million dollar listing okay so he was talking about how he got onto the show and he went to go do the uh to interview so he can be on this reality tv show he's like i'm not gonna lie I was just doing rentals. I didn't have these big multi-million dollar listings, nothing like that. But ultimately, he fooled everyone um, during that process and made himself seem so busy, planned everything out, like all these people, oh, I'm going to do all these listings, all these showings. I'm going to show I'm really busy. And <laughs> yeah, he literally just said like, yeah, he faked it until he made it. So what is that? You hear all these rappers talk about it or rap about it in... Um, and their songs mm. celebrities talk about it in interviews you read it in books and ultimately it's like um an english aphorism which basically if you imitate self-confidence competence and you have an optimistic mindset and ultimately really believe that you obtain these skills or you will be this person one day blah blah like it's gonna flourish into reality it really is. So that's my take on faking it until you make it. Like Ryan, for instance, he really believed he can sell these million dollar mm -hmm. houses and that he is good enough and that he will get there. And within a couple of years, he did. And you start to see on the show, he's one of the number one realtors in New York. And now for me, when I first started the business, I knew nothing. <laughs> nothing uh, nothing but that first year i told everyone we're the number one embroidery place here in houston we are the best i was saying all these things i was getting orders nationwide after that and man i messed up so many times i i think there were some customers that honestly they never came back um but i knew i was gonna get there i yeah. knew i was confident and knew i was gonna work hard enough to get there and i can now proudly say i know we are one of the best embroidery shops not just in houston but like nationwide i'm not even joking around some of these big companies that we work for they've stayed with us this new ashton martin account that we have the owner literally said he's like this is the best hat and the best embroidery i've ever had and they completely switched over to us a hundred percent so i knew i was gonna get there um but I, at the time i wasn't Mm -hmm. And that to me is fake it until you make it. Do you think it applies to like everybody or is like a certain certain type of business? Um, no, I think it's in any industry to anybody, honestly, but it's also me how you do it. I think maybe really the kind of perspective that you had is some people kind of walk around. They're super flashy, maybe. It was more about, yeah, having like a certain possession that mm -hmm. they had. Um, An attitude, maybe. Yeah maybe how they treat others or, or whatnot but it's like okay chill like you're mm -hmm. not that. yeah like you're i like, feel like down. that's when i'm like all right you don't stop you know yeah like, like, like stop <laughs> like, yeah calm down it was one of those yeah yeah but ultimately i think it's just it really just comes down to confidence you exude confidence okay. and i think that will hmm how do i say it like you exude this confidence now like you know for sure that you have this millionaire mindset but you're just not there yet yeah. but you will and that's that's how i think of it so so how did you deal with like all the the the, the times on the on the way up when you messed up how did you deal with that like, oh man it was tough it was it was really tough mentally because it's just so frustrating yeah you think you're getting better um doing the best you can and then it's just like mess up after mess up but that to me these mess ups were failures like i mm -hmm. failed but you know you have to fail to get better and every time i tried to do better and i did and i got to a point where honestly i invested a lot of money into just hiring someone with a lot of experience and that was my biggest investment like i'm talking about I, from to this day i now only hire people with 20 plus years of experience mm. and they're expensive <laughs> they're so expensive crazy. but that's that's what i invest in like yeah um and i'm very proud of that and uh 
yeah um, like to do to work at the shop right to work at the shop yes oh, wow to, well at least to on the uh machines oh okay 20 plus years of experience uh, in order to um even touch our machines because these machines are really expensive and um they are very complicated and um there's not many people that can service these machines. Like I literally have to call someone from California, fly them in to come and fix it now. It's crazy. I would not even recommend this kind of business or industry to anyone. It's just it's a really lot, hard. right? It's I mean, a lot. Yeah. You know, people see all the glitz and the glamour and they're like, oh, and I make it look easy, honestly. I really do, I think. But no. It, and it's not pretty, by the way. It's not a pretty industry <laughs> no, I, whatsoever. No, I get it because I have a small embroidery machine. Mm-hmm. It's like a four inch, mm-hmm. you know, but it's just like for me, for personal yeah. use or whatever. But even at that, like, I feel like I just the fact that you have to center it or put it on a like a specific yeah. it's like a hassle. Like It's a hassle, but not just that. It's like it's very tedious. And then um, just one little thing can go wrong. Like if you didn't trace the little pattern and then it hits the the arrow like you just fucked up the machine mm-hmm. like you just fucked it up and yeah. um it's a an expensive fix like that happens all the time and that's twelve hundred dollars every time yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so crazy right yeah. well yeah. you said you get so it's just so people know it's like apparel up right is you and your brothers or mm-hmm. so i'll talk a little bit about that so apparel up was essentially a business that my brother and i started um, maybe like four years ago, I was straight out of uh, college. And um, since then, my brother and I split and we have our own company. So I solely own Apparel Up and he owns Brand Exposure. So we do the same exact thing. We use the same facility and we use the same employees. Mm-hmm. But we just kind of separate our money. That's basically what we do. We just separate yeah. it. Like what's his is his, what's mine is mine. And ultimately it's because... Jerry's very young, and uh, I don't think he realized, like, oh, shoot, I'm making all this money, and he, just, he would blow it. <laughs> no, you know, it's funny, because I remember one time, uh, y'all were arguing about something, right? And then y'all had gone out, I think, on the weekend, uh-huh. and then he spent all his money or something. Yeah. And then you were just like, you need to, like, be smarter with your money and all this yeah. stuff, you know? And then he's like, whoa, well, you know, I don't know. He was saying, y'all were going back and forth yeah. on, about yeah. that a lot, so. Yeah, so a little, yeah, backstory. I, you know, Rolly used to work there for a little bit, and um, you would often hear me and Jerry have our discussions, and that was definitely one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, me and Jerry would just always bicker about the finances because Jerry, again, was very, very young, and... Um, he would never look at the finances, whatever, at all. But he knew money was coming in. Yeah. And so here we have a business card with money. There's money in it. <laughs> and uh, he would just swipe left to right, left to right. He didn't even want to know how much he was spending, how often he was swiping. And I, of course, did all the accounting work. And I would just, on a Monday after a whole weekend, I would look at it. And I'm like, do you know you just spent $1,000 on Saturday and another $800 on Sunday? He's like, what? No, I couldn't have been that much. No, no, no. I was only out for a little bit. No, there's no way. I'm like, Jerry, you paid for everyone's (laughs) drinks, clearly, because I know you didn't consume all these shots. And yeah, we were just always bicker about that. But, you know, I don't fault him. It's totally fine. That's in the past. And I'm glad he enjoyed it. I honestly, I do. I think... um, whatever yolo you only live once but <laughs> now since we separated he's gotten so much better because now he has to take care of his finances and he's gotten so so much better and now honestly i think he even invests more than i do okay. so yeah i think he's gotten so much better honestly yeah i'm kind of curious to know like was that was that the first time y'all had like um a taste of like profits like that or money like that or were y'all already living that type of lifestyle oh no not at all um you know i was fresh out of college but i was still like working at the time anyway so i've always kind of made my own money and you know bought myself whatever i wanted in a sense jerry was like straight out of high school so for him it was like a definite thing Mm -hmm. like you know he didn't go to college like all his other friends did he started this business like he knew money was coming in and so yeah to him it was just like oh i'm about to you know buy all the things that i want do all the things that i want that my older siblings are doing like it just seemed a little more attainable and natural for him to do um but no we didn't technically live like that at all but uh 
Yeah, we got a little taste of it, which was nice. I mean, we knew we knew money was coming in, so that that was it. And what yeah. about your parents? Like, mm-hmm. how was their support whenever you're like, okay, I'm out of college, but I'm about to start a business that has nothing to do with my degree? Yeah, you know, they were always the ones to like push all of us to go to school. They worked really hard to put us into the best schools. You know, we didn't even live like in an area where they had the best schools at the time. So my mom would do whatever she could to get us into those schools by using someone else's address. She okay. would put me in like the Vanguard classes, AP classes for all of us and put us in extracurricular activities. I think at one point too, like in my high school, I was literally in a cheer squad with nothing but white girls at one point. Joe was like in a school where it was nothing but Asians and stuff like that. So we were kind of exposed to something a little more different. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm thankful for that. And ultimately, they were all about education. But although my older brother and I did follow that career path and we excelled, we both ended up just leaving that and doing our own thing. And I think they see now, like, hey, at least they have that. Because parents just want that security. Yeah. But then we've we've proved them wrong. Like, we really have. Um, and they know that. It's so crazy because now they're really enjoying the fruits of all of our labor. Like, my mom now, she drives like a foreign car she's driving over here an audi like my dad just we just got him like a brand new brand new 2022 boat all paid off between all of us like and we just went to this badass vacation that i think everyone saw on my instagram like mm-hmm. kind of like livy lavish <laughs> but i mean they deserve it and now they really see like my dad is so crazy to like hear him say he's like Oh yeah, first class. Like he, we um, we paid for his first class uh, ticket, and uh, he's like, "Oh, I can get used to this. Like, I don't ever want to go back. Like, mm-hmm. this is, <laughs> yeah. Like he got, like he adapted like this. It was so crazy. But I was so happy. We were all so happy to like see him just really enjoy himself. And he's just, I like, I felt like he got a sense of relief. Like, hey, I really don't even need to work this hard anymore. Like, mm-hmm. he still works so hard. But my dad's always been like that. And honestly, I wouldn't even want him to retire because he would not have anything to do. But um, I'm really happy. Like, it's a feeling that I've never felt before. And it was just like a sense of relief. Like, them being relieved. Like, oh, you know, we're good. Yeah. We can live life now. Like, we're, everyone's good. Is he, does he work labor? like so he's an engineer okay okay yeah for an oil and gas company i mean he does really well for himself yeah um but it wasn't always like that you know he really worked himself up and uh yeah he's one of the biggest ones in the in the company he knows how to do it all he's been in the same company for 40 years okay um but yeah all he knows is is work yeah work, yeah work, i feel work. like yeah i feel like uh, it'd be the same with my dad where if I was ever in a position where I could retire him or something, he just wouldn't want yeah. to. Yeah. And I don't I don't even I don't I'm not an advocate for that at all. Like my mom, she is a stay at home mom technically, but you know, we're we're older. There's no reason for you to be a stay at home mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now she she's a full time employee with us and so she helps mm. us out and she loves it. Because she's around other people, yeah. socializes with the employees, and she's just the mom of the shop. Like she feeds everyone all the time. I'm like what are you doing? <laughs> yeah but um no it's really cool and so but, and she's really close to all of us but congratulations though because i know that it as a you know as a kid is always a goal to like give that to your parents it is you yeah. know yeah. i i rather give more to my parents than for myself yeah, honestly my mom actually sure. drives a nicer car than i do right now <laughs> yeah and i'm not ashamed of it like i i'm really happy that we were all able to do that for them. Yeah. Damn, that's about us. Yeah. It is. Yeah. What are some like crazy like challenges that you like dealt with like on the way up like that? Like Um, so some of the challenges and the biggest challenge is honestly just figuring it all out. Like I didn't know anything. Nothing. Yeah. Um, I didn't technically have a mentor or anything. I just a lot of Google and YouTube was mm. the biggest thing. And um you know, people often want the cheat sheet or that mentor to just pave the way for them. But if you really want it, you're going to figure it out. Yeah. And I kind of figured it out by doing a lot of research on my own, but also making a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes that still cost me to this day. One of the biggest ones was with the taxes. You know, mm. I didn't even know I had to pay my sales tax. I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> and they're like, hey, you owe this much or you just got fined for every month that you didn't pay. I'm like, and that's for two years. I was like, I didn't know. 
Damn, yeah. that's it was crazy. crazy. But I no, I fought everything crazy. honestly, and it was totally fine. Like um, we're in good standing now. Have we even changed to an escort? That's a whole nother thing. But I've learned a lot since then. So I've just been learning along the way. So those that's been my biggest challenge, and also me too. Um, sharing my responsibilities, I think, is the hardest thing for anyone to do because you only trust yourself yeah. to do the job, right? <laughs> but I had to split the responsibilities. I had to be okay with like kind of hiring new people and stuff like that, and just sharing my responsibilities with them. Yeah, so that's one thing that I kind of want to touch on too because yeah. um, I feel like I deal with that a lot. Like I don't want to trust nobody on doing stuff that I'm doing, yeah. whether it's like designing, whether it's like the rug stuff or anything, pretty much. So how did you like even consider it consider or take that, the like, step like to do that? Yes. Yeah, so this is the biggest and the hardest thing I think for anyone, especially like a newcomer, right? Um, once you do it, you're a little more comfortable and easier to do it the next time. But ultimately, uh, I just knew where I wanted to be, the numbers I wanted to hit, all the things I wanted to do, which is have multiple businesses, I knew like, hey, this is the next step and I need to figure it out. I need to try it. Mm -hmm. and you were one of the first ones that I tried, mm -hmm. right? I was like, I can't do any of this graphic design, but it's so necessary. Like in my business, I have to provide mock-ups. I need to do flyers. I need to do this, this, and that. I can't do it. I'm not going to take the time to learn it. Let me give this job to someone else who's a little more professional and mm -hmm. has more experience. And I gave that to you and then so on and so forth. I can't run these machines. I'm not going to take the time to learn it and do it. I'm going to put someone in place that knows how to do it and so on and so forth for every other job title. And honestly, what you do is you limit it. Like this person just runs the machines. That's all you do mm -hmm. all day. This person just answers the phones and the emails and handles the customers at the front. That's all you do. Next person, you're just packaging and folding all the clothes into a box. That's all you do. And I think what people think <laughs> is, hey, I'm going to get someone. I'm going to teach them everything. They need to do everything up to my standard and do it just as well as I can. No, you're setting yourself up for failure. Mm. It's very limited, small tasks for everyone. And that's the key and nothing more. Damn, you breaking it down like that makes a lot of sense. It yeah. does. Yeah, because it does. honestly, I feel like he was thinking about <clears throat> getting somebody and maybe teaching them. Let's use the Having to teach first. a lot of like the, the main stuff or just taking a lot of time to yeah bring them up to your level like that. You know what I mean? It's not going to happen. It's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. To this day, I'm the number one in sales. I'm actually training two other people for sales position. Um, but I know... Ultimately, they may not do it like I do, but I'm going to get them to that point. And that's all they're going to focus on. You're not going to do the packaging. You're not running the machines. You're not doing anything else. Just this. And I'm just going to teach you this side mm. up to my standard, at least. So that's the thing. I think people go into something. They're like, oh, I'm just going to like hope I can replicate myself into this person. Right. And they'll do it. Everything that I can do up to the level that I can, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Just one aspect. Because obviously you can do it all. You do multiple things. There's not going to be a person that can do everything you do. So yeah. you just got, there's just going to have to be multiple people to do different tasks. Yeah. Damn. So what about partnering with Jerry? Like, was that a challenge or was that like cool at first? And then it became like a, obviously we've talked about it, but. Yeah. So the biggest thing, and I will always say this, it was Jerry's idea. And um, there are certain traits that I have, <laughs> certain skills that I have that Jerry doesn't have and vice versa. Jerry is that like, he comes up with the ideas. He's a risk taker. He's all for it. He persuades you. He's really good at that. And I just execute. I figure it all out and I make it happen. I create procedures, just an entire process and assembly line, whatever I need to do, I'll figure it out. And I make sure I can run it and get it going. Jerry's also more on the creative side, innovative. He likes to implement technology. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. So we're like the dynamic duo. And so for some people and some businesses, um, I would always say find a partner or an investor that ha that can bring something to the table that you can't. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I with us, he's the, I think you'd be more like Jerry and I think I'd be more like her. Because <laughs> he is yeah. more creative, but I feel like I probably do more of the, 
think it through. I mean, he does too. He's realistic, you know, but like, yeah. I feel like he'll be like, oh, this is badass. And I'm like, oh, well, what do we do this? Mainly with our son, though, mm-hmm. you know, because okay. we have to find somebody to take care of him yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. But go on quick break. Quick yeah. Break. We'll be back. Okay. Yeah. Sir. And we are back um, with some more J. Franco. So, yeah, I, I had a question, right? So it's like, what's, did you ever have to do something that people are like going to be like, damn, that's kind of crazy for like, your what business? The fuck? yes yeah i mean i've had a lot of moments like that i have there's been times where i took another business out of business and i took all their employees well you took them out of business i took them out of business i had insight in there and i knew all the financial problems they were already going through then i started to steal their employees and i guaranteed them a lot more and then in a sense actually that's probably a little too much we can cut that, one. <laughs> that was a little bit too much i'm not gonna go into that one but that did happen but the one i will talk about is the um i did um get a little insight at this way bigger company that's been in business for so many years and um kind of like a spy got a little insight in there and ultimately i needed to hire professionals that had a shit ton of experience Mm -hmm. and so this person told me hey this is the time that the employees go out to lunch this is the door in which they all come out from there's two shifts and this is the gate that you have to go through in order to get to that door i'm like okay i'm desperate for employees so i um drive my car up there i print all these flyers and boom it's uh 12 o'clock and sure enough, everybody, everybody swarms out of that door and I'm getting out of my car. I'm trying to pass out these flyers to everyone and trying to at least hold a conversation with someone. Let mm-hmm. them know, hey, look, we're hiring. We offer more. We can give you this and that. And I really only held a conversation with one or two people. I felt a little defeated. I was like, fuck. It's because everyone's yeah. ready to go to lunch. They're not trying to talk <laughs> yeah. to me. Yeah. So I managed to pass out my flyer, though and have a good conversation with at least two people Mm -hmm. damn by the end of that day i had a shit ton of people call me back if people were ready to quit their job by the end of the day but basically what i did i went to go poach this other business for their employees and um they found out they threatened to sue me and call the cops and this and that and you know I get it. Maybe it's not the right thing to do. I wouldn't want someone to do that to me. Mm -hmm. But I had to do what I had to do. And there's no shame (laughs) in my game. There's not. And But I will say, I didn't even end up hiring anyone. But I will say, some of the top people that have been there for 25 plus years, they're ready to leave. And they call me and they're like, if you can just promise me this, this, and that, I will move. And I will leave. And I still have their numbers in my phone to this day in case I ever need them. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't do it. I did end up hiring someone else. But um, you do hear about this, and it happens all the time. It I- happened to me. Oh, really? Yeah, at the at State Farm. For real? Remember, I was at Freeway Insurance, and I was like, because like, I've done sales before. Yeah. And the State Farm reps went to Freeway Insurance. Oh, okay, okay. And they got you. And they ended up, because, and I didn't even help them, but yeah. they were with some another agent, and... The agent was having trouble or whatever so i went mm-hmm. to go help that agent mm-hmm. so then they ended up calling me on the recorded line oh wow and then i was like they're like oh i'm looking for you whatever and i'm like oh here's my cell phone like just give oh. me a call so then i got like an interview and then i just moved to state farm and then i got two reps from freeway to go work at state farm because they wow. were looking for sales yeah. reps you know yeah. so i mean i guess it does happen pretty often it happens all the time it just sucks when it happens to you and i wouldn't (laughs) want that to happen to me and trust me all eyes and ears for me everywhere they don't know but i watch the cameras all the time (laughs) i don't let she's eating lunch (laughs) yeah what are they talking about (laughs) no yeah yeah no i no i will not allow that to happen but i at least know like i provide an amazing culture and environment in my business to the point where i don't think they would want to that's what i was gonna say and i offer competitive pay and amazing benefits and perks so and incentives so i know everyone's happy and i i wouldn't allow that to happen or i wouldn't want that to happen mm. but i remember that happened i used my first job was at fedex and i was working like in the warehouse and all that and 
there was like a, a a spy there was like shit going around they're like yo there's a spy in here and i was like the fuck like it's like a movie or some shit you know like but yeah they had a spy like making sure like uh looking at uh, like um uh, operations and all that stuff yeah. and i was like damn and they he was like an employee or something but i was like damn that's just real Sale ella como spy toda looking nice. she's like behind the bushes and shit <laughs> <laughs> she's yes. like the kim kardashian have yeah. you seen the meme where she's like on behind the bush yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> That's no that was. was me i was literally in my car just like oh, okay is it that door is it that door <laughs> and then they all come out i'm like oh my gosh i get out of the car but yeah that, that's probably <laughs> probably one but I mean, that's not too bad, I guess. Like, I mean, you know. It is crazy, though. It's crazy to hear, like. Well, how did you feel when they they call you to tell you they were going to call the cops? Yeah, how did they find out? Oh, yeah. So the manager calls me because, I mean, I have my number on the flyer. Mm. He calls me. He's so upset. And he's just like, you know, that's illegal. I will sue. If you step foot into our premises, you will be handcuffed, blah, blah. And, uh, I mean, he did scare me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Uh, I didn't go back, but yeah. I got enough calls to the point where I I can just hit them up. I was like, hey, if you find me someone, I'll give you this much money as a referral. Just mm. find me someone. Um, but, yeah, again, I just, I had to do. But is it illegal? It is definitely illegal, yeah. It is? Yes, definitely, yeah. <laughs> oh, <shit>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to do that whatsoever. Um, but, you know, it's all up on the person if they want to, like, press charges and stuff like that. Mm. Nah, that's too crazy. Mm-hmm. That's probably, the, yeah, that's probably one of the craziest things I know about you now. So yeah. I don't know. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn, she is a go-getter. I am. Oh. I feel like there's a couple more, but, you know, they're not going straight to my head right now. But they're, yeah. So on a more, like, uh, serious note, well, that's pretty serious, but yeah. um, what's like some good advice for somebody that wants to start a business either like this or like, because I feel like y'all's business is like a big business. So, mm-hmm. well, one question that I have is like, did y'all, did y'all start off with like a loan or was it like self uh Yeah. So funded? this one's actually a really good one. I don't think I've ever talked about this. There was no loan and there was no one else's money. It was just two kids with an idea <clears throat> that were super hungry and driven I will say I was kind of working um, while I was in college, so I did save up $10,000. So I was working with $10,000, but $10,000 doesn't get you anywhere. All it got me was two months of rent and my sign that was outside because that cost me five grand. So, yeah. So that's all. Wait, for the actual, like, the facility you have right now? Yeah, yeah. The storefront. The storefront. The storefront was just two months. And then my sign, that was it. That's all it got me. Oh, yeah. Shit. Um, that's all it got me. And um, <sighs> I went really far with that. So I think my advice is you got to learn how to make money without money. What does that even mean? Anyone can interpret that differently. But for me, basically, I was just a broker at the time. I knew I can get the clientele. So let me make money off of that. I was just a middleman. So I got all this clientele, all this work. I now have my storefront. I look legit. Even more p- uh, money, or, uh, more people are coming. I'm giving the work to someone else for, you know, they're doing it really cheap. And then I just take all that profit. So me and Jerry did that for a long time. Mm-hmm. Getting all this money in, limiting our expenses. And we got to a point where we got so big that all these other people couldn't even keep up with the work. So I was like, all right. And they put me in the back burner. They were taking too long. They were messing my stuff up. I was like, I can't rely on you guys anymore. Like I need, it's, it's my problem and it's my responsibility. I got to a point where I finally had enough money to buy my own machines. And at this time, which really sucks, but people don't, I don't think they even realize this. You can't even get a business loan. You can't even go to the bank, get some money without getting really like completely fucked, you know, with the interest rate or, or like you really, honestly, you can't even get a loan. I'm going to lie. Like, you, I don't think you can. I have, You have to come into business with some kind of money. Mm-hmm. And what people do most of the time is they get an investor. And that's probably the worst thing that you can do because you get an investor. They All they do is provide cash. And you do all the work. And you do all the work. And they're taking a big percentage from you. And then you lose motivation because you're like, why am I giving them all the, my money when you, you didn't do anything? Mm-hmm. But ultimately, they gave you everything they gave you the money that you didn't have so anyone that's going into business yes you need money you need money keep your day job do it as a side gig up to a point where that's gotten too big to a point where you now have to do it full time 
and and go full force that's my biggest advice for sure Mm -hmm. damn that is so crazy yeah. yeah. And did you automatically like just y'all didn't work from home at all or did you just oh, go yeah. for it? No, for sure. We didn't. Um I did Amazon for a little bit where I was doing just custom shirts, which I think you do on like a cricket mm-hmm. or yeah, right? So a lot of people do that. And it was actually really good money because I got a lot of orders to the point where I was making at least like hundred twenty dollars a day and just my orders and I'm and living with my parents. I have a whole room dedicated to it. Under twenty dollars a day is pretty good pretty to good me. Too. Yeah. And that was happening almost every day. So I was good. I was fine. I was up obtaining myself. I was living just fine. Till I started the business. Now we're messing with bigger numbers, a lot more expenses, marketing, rent, employees. I wasn't even making as much money anymore. I'm like, damn, I'm not left with anything anymore. Yeah. So for a long time it was like that and it was really discouraging. But you have to have that bigger vision. And once you start to pay everything back, that's when everything really starts coming into your pocket. So so how is it like right now? You have like, what about y'all's machines? Like how many do y'all have or? Yeah, so we have several machines now. Um, machines that do different kinds of things. So we have our screen printing machines, our embroidery machines, DTG machines, vinyl machines. Um, it's definitely a handful, but where we focus more is the embroidery machines. Mm. I love those the most because... Um, once we get that file done, uh, it stays the same every single time. So now it's literally a file on a USB and you just plug it into the machine. The machine does all the work and we're done. So that's why I get these big companies. That's the same thing every single time. So it's so easy. I just plug it into the machine and the machine does all the work. Yeah. (laughs) What's like one of the biggest companies you have? Um, honestly, I have a couple. Um, we're talking big names like Mercedes Benz, Ashton Martin, uh, Texas Children, Methodist. Um, damn. Did you just post a Lulu? Lulu Oh, Lulu Lemon too. Yeah, that was a big one. That was crazy. Yeah, and like just like all the little bars and restaurants (laughs) around Houston and stuff like that, which is crazy but yeah i mean they come here so now i'm definitely credible at this point yeah i know like, i mean <laughs> yeah now people are intimidated to the point where they're like oh you know i don't know do you do like small orders like this yeah. you do little yeah i was now. gonna ask you that too because i remember <laughs> working there like i'd have like you know i'd be sitting at the front so there'd be like people who just want like one shirt yeah. or like oh my daughter wants a shirt you know something like I that those. and you'd be like all right we'll do it you know but i didn't want to do it but we did it because we had to do it yeah. like to stay busy right um i really do not like to um let go of business whatsoever uh decline business i just that's like letting go of money you know yeah. i don't like that feeling um and just saying no i really don't but people don't realize that just doing one-offs or a very small order actually is a lot more work than running a bigger production because our machines are commercial grade they run so many at one time mm-hmm. and uh when the employee is running the same order for two to six hours they're not gonna mess up it's the same thing over and over again and then sometimes when we get orders where they're very like specialized orders it's like Oh, what color was it again? Or what color is this one supposed to be? This one's supposed to be a different color. It's it's a lot more work. And it's um, it gives us a bigger opportunity to mess up. And I don't like mm. to do that. I don't like to deal with that. So I'd rather stick to my niche, which is these bigger companies, same logo <laughs> and the same thing over and over again for a long period of time. Especially when your uh, employees already have, like, they get the hang of it, right? Yeah, they and get the hang of it. Too. Like, there's companies that, honestly, they get stuff almost every day. I'm like... How many employees do you have? What the heck? Like, you guys order so much stuff. And then I started, like, thinking about it. I'm like, wait, who are you guys? Like, let me Google y'all. What's y'all's net worth real quick? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because they order so much. I'm like, wow, it's crazy. But they already know, oh, this is this company. They already know the colors. They don't even have to sometimes look at the paper. They just already know. So how do you market yourself? Like, I know because... Obviously, like being there, I would see that you would do a bunch of the sales stuff. Like, mm-hmm. or you you tell Jerry, like, yo, I got to go and I'm going to go do my sales shit. You know, yeah, try to I get would do clients outside and stuff. sales. I would do door to door. I don't like cold calling because that's the worst. Everyone hangs up on you. They yeah. even cuss you out sometimes. That's like the worst. So I was doing door to door. Honestly, I would just pick an area or target like a company that I want. And I would just go in there. And for a girl, my ally is a little easier because, you know, they, they're not going to turn you down. They're not. So that's where I had the upper hand with Jerry. And uh, 
honestly also my Instagram. Um, I'm not even going to say honestly, my friends were not the first ones to support me or give me business. They really weren't. Uh, it was just random people from Instagram that really believed that I was the best embroidery shop in Houston mm -hmm. that gave me the business. <laughs> and then from there on, I just started to get some kind of big companies that would definitely post it. And they're like, well, they can trust me. You can trust me. And then that's when I started to fall. Now wow. I see a lot more people on my Instagram now that um, hit me up. And I'm on sales all the time. If you're talking business, that. If anyone wants to really reach me, place an order. I will reply to you. <laughs> I will reply. And uh, I have. And there's times, I'm not even joking. There's one, maybe like a week ago, this company, I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Cool. And they were just telling me what they wanted. They were very like certain what they already wanted because they've done it so many times before. They're like 400 of this, 400 of that, 100 of this. And I'm like typing it and it comes out to be 13,000. And I'm like, hey, I just sent you the invoice. And by the time I even got to write that, it was already paid. I'm like, what the heck? You Like, what? That's I was like, crazy. whoa, yeah. And this actually has happened a couple of times where their invoices are like over 10,000. And it was just done like that. Because they already knew what they needed and it's super yeah. easy. And they get it all the time for the company. Um, so they have an expectation of like, oh, I got to pay it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, it's done. Like, oh, I'll pay it. And it gets here quicker as soon as you pay. Um, and that's been happening a lot and even more now. And I'm like, oh, shit, I need to take my Instagram very serious. Like, And people might find it annoying, but I post all the time. Like, All I really talk about now is like my business. I show it all the time. Like I said, some people might get annoyed or they don't even care. Is to your see. personal or your business? Page no, Instagram? my personal. On your personal? My personal gets the most orders. Um, on the Apparel Up account... I do get some good ones, but a lot of times it's like, man, these people like ask the most vague questions, <laughs> like how much for a shirt? I'm like, I'm not going to yeah. answer that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't even bother. I just can't. If people really want to order, they approach me directly and they're like, this is exactly what I need. I just typed in voice. It gets done. That the, These mm -hmm. are the people that are serious. Um, anything else? Just go onto a website, man. I spent thousands of, thousands of dollars on my website. Just do the um, request quote, you know? Yeah, yeah y'all have it to where it's like, uh, it's very well designed, you mm -hmm. know? And I, I felt like I was, I don't know if I was there when y'all were getting it done, but yeah, it's like everything is like so, the animation on it is pretty animation good, you know? Animation is so easy. It's like, <clears throat> okay, which service do you want? It has a little picture. Do you want t-shirts with ink mm -hmm. or embroidery? Do you want a hat? Do you want a polo, a sweater? And it's just so easy. Okay, how many do you think you want? Type it in. What color? Like, it's so easy. Yeah. It's like question after question. And then, boom, you just filled out all these questions that finally help us get you, what, uh, you the, what you want. The answer that you need instead of how much is a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Have you, have you thought about, or I don't know if you do have an employee that runs your Instagram page, like your business No, account? I don't. I don't have anyone. I think maybe in the future. Right now, we are paying a lot of money now. Um, for uh, marketing and like someone that's about to do a bunch of our videos and they're like campaigns uh, that involve reels, YouTube videos. Like now we're really getting okay. into that um, because I mean, we, we don't do it and we're not consistent either with any of that. And now we're finally handing the work to someone and oh my God, I can't wait till y'all see it. It's amazing stuff. Like you guys are going to see it. You're going to be blown away. You're going to be like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like this looks like a commercial <laughs> from like something you'll see on TV. Damn, yeah. that's badass. I mean, it's yeah. a sounds like a big company, so it deserves like that much yeah. attention. Yeah. So. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Going going back to like the invoicing stuff, did you ever send out an invoice and you kind of felt bad? You're like, damn, I don't know. Like it's kind yes, of too much. All like, the time. Yeah. In the beginning, I would. <clears throat> I knew what the price was, and I knew I wasn't gonna make as much money as I should have. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, oh shit, it's a thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. That's <laughs> a lot of money. So I'd be like, oh, eight fifty, and I would just like look at them. And they'll just swipe. I'm like, fuck, why did I do that? They just swipe. <laughs> <laughs> and that kept happening over and over again to the point where I got comfortable. I'm like, no, that's the price. And they know yeah. what the price is and they're going to pay because that's the price. Um, just like you go to the store and the hat is $50. And you pay it. You're going to pay it because yeah. the hat you is $50. So you're not going to question You're not going to negotiate with the cashier. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. So I've now put it to the point where it's like, no, there's no negotiation. This is the price. Do you and feel like you feel like that now because you don't have to fake it anymore? Do you feel um, like yeah, because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm credible now. Yeah. I, yeah. I have the credibility. I work with these big companies that really do pay top dollar. 
And yeah, I don't need to negotiate and I don't need some of these orders that I really don't make much money and they're so hard and like almost nothing. Like I'm not going to do that. I'm not, <laughs> I, I've gotten to that point. People know it now. So I don't really, I don't get those like bullshit questions anymore, I guess. <laughs> what if, um, what was I going to say? Like, well, I don't even know how to ask this. It's not a what? crazy, crazy question, but how much do you think your business is worth? At no. this point. Yeah. Apparel up. Apparel is, uh, apparel up is almost at a million dollars. Damn, that's Dang. crazy. Because I was going to say, like, it's crazy because the... Because I see a lot of companies, right? Uh, uh-huh. Like, on Instagram and stuff. And I know that their following doesn't always reflect mm-hmm. how much the worth of it is. So, mm-hmm. I don't even know how much apparel up is at right now. Like, followers-wise. Follower-wise? Let me tell you. I actually just looked at it right now as I was um, driving up here because... I haven't been posting. I, yeah. I solely take care of my Instagram and I have not been posting lately. It's so hard, honestly, because I'll either focus on my personal or, or the, the yeah. parallel. It's that's so what, hard yeah, to do everything. Yeah, that's what I was asking if you were going to hire somebody yeah, to do that. I the... do. I, can, I probably want to, but it just takes a couple minutes out of my day. I'm like, Jennifer, when just you go to work, it. just do it. Post something, <laughs> answer to some questions. Just do it every day. It's so hard to be consistent sometimes. It really mm-hmm. is with all the things that I do. But I actually looked at it today and I was like, Dang, I'm almost at 5,000 organic followers. I actually posted today on my story for the first time in a while. And I got all these views. And I'm like, these are almost the same views that I get on my personal Mm -hmm. story. And I don't know if it's because I may I just hadn't posted in a while or something. I was like, oh, shit, I need to take this a little more serious. Yeah. I forget sometimes. But that's honestly, it is a lot. It really is. And um for a business, yeah. it is because I feel like business pages. It's harder to yeah. get your. Um, it really is to get your following up. because no one wants to see this all day. Yeah. I'm talking about. I get to post a T-shirt like, oh, look at this T-shirt, look at this hat, look at these machines. And running. because you don't want it to look tacky because it's a business, you yeah, know. Yeah, so but I just just today I realized I was like, oh shit. But that yeah. yeah, but so it goes back to that. Like I'm like, damn, like a five thousand like. If you're just randomly scrolling and you see it and it's like, oh, 5K, you would not think like, oh, this company's worth a million, you know, or even um, close to it like that. I think so, because you look <clears> at <throat> really big companies, like even construction companies, who's going to follow a construction company? Yeah, yeah, Who cares that's about so that? True. They'll have 200 followers and they'll try and post some of their projects, whatever, try and get their name out there. Mm-hmm. But they're a multi-million dollar business. But no yeah. one cares about seeing construction. It's all about consistency. And what I do, I make it look cool. Yeah. And I really show people stuff that is well known. Like, oh, look at Mercedes. Look at Ashton Martin. I'll post up the car. Today, I posted up this um, the uh, the truck show that's happening this weekend. And I posted all their stuff. I was like, they're going to be the flyest ones. Like, people really get into it. So mm-hmm. I made it in a point where it's a little entertaining. And I shout a lot of people out. And then I think if you did the ASA- ASMR, right? That's what it's called? Like the videos with your machines, I think that would get like because a lot of people it gets are into views. Yeah. yeah. People actually they've never seen my machines. They don't. Mm. They've never seen something like this. They're familiar with the sound now. Like every time I post, they know where I'm at because of the sound of the embroidery machines. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, that's uh the sound of money. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, but they get to see how they work. It is really really cool because they're sewing machines that sew the same exact design at so many at one time and like we have multiple designs multiple machines and they're all running at the same time it's just crazy how fast it gets done mm-hmm. and how beautiful it gets done and so people find it they actually find it very interesting and since you do post more on your personal page like how is your personal life aside from like oh wait oh. i yeah. guess we can you know talk yeah, about we're, the gonna get, well, we're gonna get to the juicy part <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll everybody back, wants guys. to know yeah. that <laughs> And we are back, and we were going to talk about your personal life. How oh, is yeah. that? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, what do you want to know about my personal <laughs> life? Exactly. Everything, everything. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I so, guess, go ahead. I was going to say, let's talk about, like, the fitness journey. You've been posting a lot about your fitness. Mm-hmm. Like, what's up with all that? So that is something I just started maybe <clears throat> two, year, two years ago, two months ago. Um, consistently, I've never done this before. I've always, like... You know, kind of worked out. I've always been like an athlete um, in high school with extracurricular activities and stuff like that. But never like this. I mean, we're talking about um, keeping count of my sleep schedule and um, my diet, counting my macros, and literally training like a bodybuilder where I am increasing my weight 
every day. Um, and I training like that, I mean, you see results like that. Like my body changed in three weeks, like crazy. Um, so it becomes a little addicting. I really, really enjoy it. And it's now become a lifestyle, but ultimately it's just something I've always wanted to do. Um, and I'm just so happy to be doing it right now. Did you hire like a trainer? Yes. I hired a personal trainer, true believer fitness. Um, so yeah, I mean, I see him five times a week and him alone is probably like a really big card note. Yeah, like what I spent on <laughs> oh that. My yeah, God, yeah, really? Yeah, but ultimately it's because I know I can't push myself. I would have never pushed myself like that. Like the amount of weight that I squat now is like 195. At first, he got me to squat like my body weight. I'm like, there's no way. And I ended up doing it. I'm like, this mm -hmm. is crazy. And he's like, okay, now we're going to increase it. I'm like, what? And then I do it. I'm like, this is insane. So he really believes and he really pushes you. And again, I would have never, ever, I don't, I would have never pushed myself like that. I still can't. So there'll be days where I'll like skip out on the gym and I mm -hmm. work out on my own and I'll do like regular weight. And I'm like, I just can't. Like, I feel like I can't. I don't you know. You don't it's have so that weird. extra push. Uh, that right? extra yeah. push. He's there. Having him there and him believing that I can do it makes me believe that I, yeah, I can squat this. Yes, I can do this much weight. So. I continue to do it. I continue to pay for it because I don't trust myself to do it on my own just yet. Yeah. Do you have like a like a mind like a goal at, to where you're like, okay, maybe I'm there yet where I don't have to get him? So I started working out, and it, within three weeks to that first month, I saw huge results. I was already acting full. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw me on Instagram. I'm like this, like this, like I'm posing. Like I didn't know how to act. I loved it. Um, and then I was just enjoying it for like one full week. And then boom, I started to like see myself a little bloated. I'm like, oh no, I need to get back. I need to get back into it. <laughs> and I went back and like I started to see more results. I started to see like my muscles pop out. And then at that point, it just becomes addicting. You just want to see how much more yeah. you can do. And I don't think there'll ever be a point where I'm like, oh, okay, I'm done. Um, and this kind of training, it's bodybuilding training. And where everyone wants to get to is to do a show. And like, that's kind of like, you know, it, that, that's just the next step. And I'm now finally considering it. I, I tell that really? to people and they're just like, no, that's so weird. Don't do that to yourself. But people don't realize like you get your body up to this point. It's kind of unrealistic. You'll have it for a day and then it just it just goes back. Yeah. Like yeah. to obtain that is not natural. Like you're not going to have that. So, yeah, I'll probably pop up with a bunch of muscles. I'll be super lean, super dehydrated, but I won't keep that for a very long time. So I think I'm considering it. We'll see. But ultimately, like, you know, I just want my waistline smaller and smaller and then my butt bigger and bigger. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But for now, I'm actually pretty happy where I'm at, but I would want to be a little more muscular. Do yeah. you get hit on a lot? Like, well, I guess whatever gym you go to do you are you like with him or you're by yourself no so um this is why i love this gym it's a very small gym he owns the gym and he only focuses on his clients oh, so it's okay. not an open gym yeah. or anything oh, like okay. that and most of the people that go to him are mostly women oh yeah okay. so he trains a lot of women and uh everyone there gets along everyone's super motivated and i love it because you get people from all ages all body types everyone's doing the same workout as you everyone's pushing as hard as you and you don't want to be that person who's complaining or not doing it so only the really like mentally strong stick through it yeah yeah, yeah. no working out i mean in general uh it's a hard thing to do it is like, you know it is mm -hmm. but it's just i'm kind of like in that right now like, <laughs> yeah he's always i go like... and then i don't go and then i go and i don't go. but rolling but uses I'm... the excuse that um it's not an excuse <laughs> I, I, just, I just feel like i'm i'm busy all the time so That's like i work i work with my dad it's full time right and then i have my shit here yeah so then i'm just like damn like i don't know like i don't have time today like i'm not gonna go today i'll make up for it tomorrow type yeah. shit and but tomorrow it, doesn't have but then as long as like you keep like your diet yeah like on point yeah you know i think you're you're no, good, if you, you do know? keep your diet and you get maybe like 10,000 steps a day, <clears throat> yeah. I think you'd be pretty okay. Because I first, before my fitness journey, I started eating clean. 
And I did that for three months and I automatically, like I lost five pounds and like 8% body fat and stuff like that. Like I already saw a change just eating clean. I feel like that's the hardest point. Yeah, the, that the is the hardest. Hard. Yeah, eating clean is kind of hard. It, it's it's really hard. All of it is super hard, but it's all about consistency. Did you have to give up like a favorite snack? No, You know what? No. Uh, I think people will find it really weird to know this about me, but I don't really enjoy eating. I am not a big <laughs> snacker. No, I really don't. Like I, I don't. There's nothing that I like about it. It's like, very time-consuming, time consuming, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't even, I feel like it makes me seem like lazy or something, but I just don't care for it. Like if I can drink a protein shake all day long, every single day, I'll be good. I do that. Yeah. Well, right. I yeah. feel like. Yeah. Um, well, I do snack, yeah. but I'm not the type to like go to a restaurant and like order like a big ass plate of food and like yeah. say. Make it a, like an Instagram thing where like, yeah, I'm going to eat this. And yeah, I'm yeah. Tiny like Monday, and Monday through Friday, I drink yeah. a protein shake. And then weekend, I, I cook a big ass breakfast, right? He but does. it's like healthy, though. Like I'll do like the turkey bacon. I'll do egg, Girl, the egg f- whites. freaking plate is full of egg whites. And I'm just like, damn. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And to me, like everybody's like breakfast is like the uh, the, big, uh, the most important meal. Yeah. Ever. But mm-hmm. to me, it's like uh, it ain't for me. Like kind of you know? slows you down. Right. It, like, to me, it's like I'll drink a protein shake like and well, that's, yeah, I'm good, that. you know, you but can. I can't sit down and have like a big ass breakfast. Like I think it upsets my stomach. Oh, okay, and yeah. then I saw another trainer, Pico, right? I think he was the one who said breakfast literally is like um you're supposed to be fasting in a way right mm-hmm. that's what he was oh, yeah. saying you're breaking your fast you're breaking your fast breakfast. yeah breakfast you know? yeah well i mean breakfast i mean does, yeah you can schedule it later on but ultimately it is your first meal of the day yeah so you want to get all these nutrients your protein pretty high up there so that it can energize you for the rest of the day so mm-hmm. you know yeah i mean i i believe that uh, as well yeah. so so what does your diet look like right now do you like eat six times a day or just three meals so or? because of me like i really i can't eat too much um when i started doing this kind of training you have to be on a high protein diet um so they got me eating like a bunch of food that i, I got disgusted because the meals were huge mm-hmm. i'm like i can't do this but i would try <laughs> and i would force myself to the point where i'm like gagging i'm like i can't do it so I had to save that food for later and I would just gag looking at it. I'm like, I can't, I just can't. <laughs> so we changed my diet um, to a point where I now I drink two protein shakes a day and really small meals because I, I just can't. And I don't even want to do that. Like that expands your stomach. I'm like, I'm not doing this. So we, yeah. I have a dietitian too. Like this is how all in and serious I am. So sh- she um, writes down my meals and preps my meals and um, we ha- we've had to change it every month because it just it wasn't working. So so your trainer doesn't do your diet? No, he doesn't. Like he can uh, give you the macros that you should follow, mm-hmm. but I'm like, okay, what's that? Fats, protein. How am I gonna find the the like, carbs? Like, <laughs> I mean, I get it. I mean, I guess I know yeah. what carbs and fats and all that, but no, I have someone else that does that, and uh, ultimately she takes care of everything and gives me all my meals and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Damn yeah i feel like i could do the macros you know um like see like, oh, yeah i feel like it's it's easy yeah it's easy. It, but i'm i'm very like simple like protein carbs and fats like that's yeah, it yeah. i'm not gonna keep up with the sugars you know yeah once though. once you have to do like the sugars and everything that's when you're like in prep mode like for a mm-hmm. show or something right yeah, like, yeah and to me it's like lim- my main goal is to hit protein because since i everyone, lack yeah everyone people don't even realize it everyone needs more protein in their diet everyone it's hard yeah it's really hard yeah yeah Yeah, if y'all want a big butt you need a protein you need to you need that protein (laughs) you need it people do a lot of carbs it's so easy to eat the mashed potatoes or the fries before everything else but you need to eat the chicken and that's why protein shakes are very good because it's just like literally it's nothing but protein Mm -hmm. you know it has maybe like like, yeah you can get a lot of protein out of those shakes so yeah it's super important Mm mm-hmm well, I was going to ask, um, so what, like, are you single or not single? <laughs> Doesn't everyone want to know that? <laughs> well, I'm asking because, you know, you do a lot for, like, a, like a girl, you know, and it's it like... Can do, it can be intimidating. Yeah, it I can know. be intimidating. It's definitely intimidating. Um, as far as being single... I will say, isn't it pretty obvious? I think everyone sees it in my story. I'm acting a fool, I think. So. Right? Am I not? <laughs> you see me out and about over here at a restaurant. I'm not showing anyone else, like... I'm single. If she was with somebody, she would just be like posting. posting. <laughs> and I have before because I usually I'm really proud of my relationships. Yeah, so I yeah, like to show it off. Um, but once you don't see that person, it's like oh, something's up, and that's yeah. They're gone. <laughs> they're yeah. They're they're out of the picture. But um, no, yeah, and no, like you said, you know, 
Yeah, a lot of people do find me intimidating. That's always happened uh, my entire life. I've always been like this. I sometimes tell people like, hey, you know, I was never that girl that um, guys asked me to the homecoming dance or prom or anything like that. And, you know, that kind of affected me a little bit. You know, it's kind of like, how annoying is that? Like your friends are being asked, but you're not like you start to think what's wrong with you. But again, now being an adult and realizing, oh, it's intimidation. I didn't know that. I didn't know what that meant. But to know that, yeah, I started at a very young age. I've always dealt with it. Um, but now going into adulthood, I will say it, it hasn't even been difficult for me anymore. I think you ultimately attract what you are. Yeah, because I was going to say, like, um, obviously your standards must be really high. So if you meet somebody that meets those standards, then it's because they're probably at the same level, right? At the same like, level, yeah. You attract who you are. You attract what you want and you attract what you put out there. And so, you know, people always want to know, like, oh, like, uh, who, who's the lucky man? Or, like, what would it take to be that lucky person or whatever? But, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't say anything crazy, but, you know, a little like myself, how I treat myself, how I carry myself, kind of, like, everything that I have going on. And ultimately, it's just, like, four fundamentals, which is ultimately, like, self-driven, disciplined, um, educated, and just all around me, like, you know, hustler like me. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I was going to say, like, um, yeah, what kind of person you look for, pretty much. So yeah. they have to be kind of like at where you're at. Um, you I think, mean, like, people think that they think, oh, like on a financial status. Like, yeah. you I was going to ask that. Yeah, it? most people think that they're like, oh, you know, they, they have to, especially being a girl, like they have to make more money than you. Right. Mm -hmm. But no, not really. You know, in my past relationship, we got together when he was still in school and didn't wasn't working, didn't have anything. And what attracted me to him is because he was so driven. He knew, he was so confident that he knew who he was going to become. And even then, being at this point in his life, he still attracted me. And mm. I was there for the entire ride. And yeah, I mean, it doesn't take, you know, you being above me or making more money than me. It's just as long as you have that self-drive and confidence, uh, yeah, uh, we'll be just fine because we'll get along just fine because we're very much alike. And what about like your parents since you know you're the only girl, right? Yes. Do they expect you to like have kids anytime soon or what do oh, they yeah. say? Yeah, I mean, our parents are at the point where they definitely want grandkids. I mean, we're all <laughs> older now. We're at my brother's past 30. I'm damn near almost there. And Jerry is the baby still, no matter what. We'll always see him as the baby. But he is an adult at the end of the day. And yeah, they're going to the point where, yeah, it's like, what's going on? Like, they start to complain to everyone now. They're like, yeah, all they give me is dogs. And that's all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, they would want it, especially, you know, me being the girl. They definitely thought they would have something by now but no yeah. no which one which one do y'all do you, which one do you think is gonna have the kid everyone first? says jerry for sure jerry yeah, he's in jerry, a relationship yeah. he's always been in a relationship he's a relationship boy <laughs> like he does not stay single for a day like <laughs> and he'll jump into a relationship and he'll be in that relationship for years like he's very devoted and loyal i love that and i admire that about him but yeah he's definitely again because he grew up with older siblings so he's picked up on these things and that's what he likes and um yeah he's a he's a little lover boy though and he he's really good with kids too so everyone sees it from him um i still see it i'm like what about you me. like do you want i want to be the first one i've told my brother so i'm like i'm gonna be the first one so if you guys even think about it let me get ahead of the game real quick <laughs> but uh, you gotta get in a relationship first yeah i know I oh do, you know I what's do. crazy i feel like the older you get I feel like, okay, so for you to have kids, do you think you have to be with the person for a long time? Like, do you want to be with the person for a long time? So I think uh, that was always my mentality. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it very traditionally, like get to know each other for a while, um, get married, mm -hmm. um, travel a little bit, then plan on having kids. My biggest thing is at least plan. Yeah. I definitely want to plan it out because, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it, right? Yeah. We both have to be on the same page. Um and I think that's just a proper way to do it. You know, now I'm more, do you hear like, oh, accidents and it just happens. But I think I am in a position like if it were to happen, I'll, I'll be okay. I, I know that. But ultimately, now I think um, 
I think my views have definitely changed since this past relationship. Everything's changed. Yeah. I think I see things differently now. I'm not about the norm. I'm not a normal person. I'm not traditional. So I think if I meet a really good person and we're on the same page, we have this, we share the same beliefs and values, um, and we plan for it, I think, yeah, I would definitely do it. Without yeah. getting married first. Oh, no, I think I would get married. That's my thing. I would definitely want to get married, no matter what. I'll and get married. Even if we just go to the chapel or, like, the courthouse, I'm okay with <laughs> you that. You want to get married before. Yeah, before like, we need to kids. be a family. We need to be yeah. established. <laughs> I got to own half of what you have. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but do you want to let them own half of what you have? Yeah, I'm okay with that, honestly. I am okay with that, 100%. I'm all about, like, hey, what's mine is yours. And what's, yeah. what's mine is yours, what's yours is mine. Yeah. yeah. All that. Honestly, if we're going to be a family, that's the only way that's going to work in my books. Um, I have been in relationships before where everything's like so separated and like that's kind of frowned upon. Even talking about prenups, I'm like, okay, we're not even married yet. I'm not going to go there. That's yeah. so uncomfortable to talk about, you know? Well, I mean, this is like, uh, it's one of those things like, well, if you need that, um, do you not like believe in me or like yeah what? people yeah. do that to protect themselves yeah and i get that i get it um we live in america that's just how it goes but mm -hmm. i was ra raised differently traditionally by two hispanic parent well mexican parents so it's a little different you know they've been going at it they've been together for 30 plus years so it's worked for them and that's how i was raised and i think that's what i'm gonna look for yeah. yeah yeah and it's not like um i guess it surprises me that somebody i guess would have told you that because it's not like you don't have anything for I yourself know, i know i think some i don't know it's so weird I, I think it's probably how people grow up honestly and i've seen people grow up in just different ways and just different views and values and a lot of people that i have dated honestly all their parents were divorced so I think maybe sometimes that would clash a little bit because I wouldn't see the way that they see. I didn't experience what they experienced. I don't protect myself the way that you probably protect yourself. And there's nothing wrong with no, that. Yeah, there there's nothing. And so I honestly, I try to become a little more understanding. But I'm like, I did come from a loving family who's still stuck together. And they would argue, you know, they would, they would go through their phases, but they never let us see that. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it was about family and making sure everyone's okay. And I think I just need to find someone with the same values. Well, That's you know, it. I think it doesn't even matter, like, if your parents are divorced or not. Like, I just really think it's, like, as a person, I mean, at some point you become an adult and you come up with your own values. Exactly. It doesn't matter, like, exactly. what you your can, parents, mm -hmm. you know, or how you what were raised. Yeah. Because you're an adult, you should make... You be can able make to, your own choices. Yeah. You can be whoever you want. Yeah. But I think experiencing that, though, it is a little difficult. And some it gets nasty. I don't know. You, you see divorce. It gets so ugly. The parents yeah, it does. It fight in front ugly. of their kids. The, the dad is like trying to strip the mom from everything. Like you're not taking anything. And on top of that, you're going to be a single mom struggling. Like that is so ugly to see, but it does happen. So I think people really do want to protect themselves. Oh, at the yeah. end of the day. It could affect people yeah. differently. So I, I mean, I don't like to see it that way. I like to think a little like happy fairy tale. But no, at the end of the day, I understand. I understand prenups and everything like that. But I think the person that I'm going to be with is going to be someone that I'm going to build with no matter what. And if that were to happen whatever we're gonna suffer the consequences and split <laughs> everything whatever yeah. yeah so if you were to get pregnant like you would still be doing all the business stuff like or you would you like kind of you know like i think about that and... all the time you know <clears throat> i talk to my parents about it i think about it i'm like you know i'm getting a little older you know at this age i thought that person was old i was like oh my god you i know? saw that not that long ago yeah it's like you see some when you're younger like when you're like out of high school out of college yeah. you see somebody that's like 28 29 yeah. you're like fuck they're old but now that you're, you're that I'm age like, you I'm think somebody yeah. that's 45 is like oh okay they're old yeah. i'm still young yeah i'm still young no so i still definitely see myself extremely young um i'm not thinking about those things right now i they will come um it's a lot of pressure when i hear from other people or i see my friends already in the stage maybe getting married or finding their yeah their like partner their life partner and starting a family it is a little difficult and just like scares you a little bit um <laughs> and they make it work uh but for me i mean i definitely want those things i think everyone wants those things but i know for a fact it will slow me down and i'm not that type of person like, no yeah and i think it will you know because like before we had milo because uh, we did do it like traditional you know mm -hmm. i mean because we met each other at a very young age yeah. you know i was 15 and oh. how old were you like 18 i was 16 or oh you, know, you were not 16 but we didn't <laughs> we met each other when i was 15 but we wow. didn't start dating till oh no we did date when i was 15 because it oh, was wow. like i, I turned, was little i was little too 
You were 18. I was in, I was in like. I gave him like a fake cologne and he's like, oh my God, you gave me a fake cologne. I'm like, you were just my friend. Like, I was not going to spend money on you. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Yeah. It's so funny because, I funny. mean, I've always worked my whole life. I like, you know. That, and like, it was like when I met him, I was like, oh, whatever. My mentality in high school is like, I'm. I don't got time for these boys, you know, like mm -hmm. they're so immature, whatever. But then I met him. I'm like, oh, he's cool. Like, you know, he's more mature. He's older than yeah. me. Um, but we did have that traditional, like we were dating, you know, for like a long time. We got engaged at five years, planned our wedding over a year, got married, got our house. And then literally we're like, okay, wow, that's beautiful. Let's, yeah. let's plan for Milo, yeah. right? And then I got pregnant. But I told him if I get pregnant, I'm staying with him. Because I didn't want to, like, leave him, yeah. you know. Because yeah. my mom's always working. And, I mean, his mom was always available to, like, take yeah. care of, like, any yeah. kids or whatever. Yeah. But I wanted to be the one to be able to stay home. Yes. So yeah. it does kind of, so, like, yeah. slow you down. It definitely does. It's a full-time job. Especially when they're newborns. Like, I, so I used to be a nanny. And so I know what it takes to take care of an infant, toddler, um, and even a teenager, especially the infants, like you have to hold them all the time. They can't even hold their head up. Yeah. You need to feed them for months to the point where they finally start eating on their own, but you have to oversee them because they can choke. Like it's a full time thing and it's actually really stressful. So of course it slows you down. You have to be a devoted mother. You know, people probably don't see what all it takes until it actually happens to them. But I always give props to those women and those, those families because it does take a village, but because I'm, I've already witnessed that and I know what it takes. I know I can't do it right now and I won't. So until I'm ready, I will get that and I will have that whole village. I promise you that. <laughs> but you know what I was going to say too, though? Um, do you follow Katie Hearn? No. No, you should follow her. So she's like a fitness girl. She has like uh, her and her husband. You know who like they are? Uh, no. Katie Hearn, uh, mm -hmm. Alani, you know Alani, uh, the energy seltzers drinks? and oh, energy yeah, yeah. drinks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, they're the owners. They're the, the owners. Oh wow, I need to look into it. Yes, yeah. uh, my friend is like sponsored by them, and he has them at his house all the time. Yes, yeah. uh, like them. Uh, she started like her fitness journey. Became like she was a trainer. They opened up a gym. Oh nice. So basically, like, like I, she's one of the people that are like I look up to because she became a mom like at the same time as me right mm -hmm. so then i feel like now that you have like a business i see like kind of like with her that she was able to still run her business but like from home as still being a mom yeah. you know no, you definitely definitely can um but it's it's hard but you have to want to do it like you want to you need to have it or no sorry i keep going back and forth you need to have it <clears throat> sorry this is not coming out. <laughs> you want to have it bad enough, I think. I said yeah. that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, yeah, you would work on it and um, and you'll figure it out. And it becomes a routine and it'll become maybe a little easier. But I know just having kids running around, I know how difficult it can be. But yeah. at it, that point, you just have to make the choice. It's like, hey, do I want this bad enough? Am I going to work hard enough for it among this obstacle? Like a child is just an obstacle. I mean, it's just going to be right there <laughs> all over the place. But you just have to deal with it and, and yeah. move forward. It's you just, just it's can't just, get up and go It's that extra just yeah. challenge, yeah. unfortunately. But it, it's very much possible. And I have seen it. I've witnessed it. Um, but I, me, I'm just saying I can't do it right now. I just can't. And <laughs> I don't also, want to. I don't want no, to. I don't just want keep to. in mind also it depends who you have your kid with. Because if they, they, they play a big part, you know. They do. And I'm sure there's very supportive of you know husbands and partners but at the end of the day who's the one there all day yeah. all day it is the mom <laughs> yeah it's all day you don't see like oh from the beginning they didn't want to eat they threw a tantrum i didn't get to wash the clothes now i'm behind on my routine because they're behind and then everything just slows down and they don't realize oh it was a whole fiasco today it was. But we're here you know, now you yeah. know, for for you not being a parent you pretty much described your day today you know i already know no, yeah. i witnessed yeah. it i was today, a nanny i was a nanny if you, I witnessed it. I've <laughs> it's done so it for funny many years. My son today was today. He's about to be four in like two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And you know that three nager, how they people mm -hmm. use that word yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. I've never really used it to describe me, because he's a really good kid. Like I can work here at the house, and he's like minding his business. Like he's yeah. very independent. Uh -huh. But I feel like that's how that's how we're raising him, yeah. right? Independent. Yeah. And um, man, today was just so bad. Like he kept telling me, talking back, telling me no, which he's never done that. Like he'll be like, no, no, and then. 
I told him to clean his room and he came back and I didn't even tell you because I took him to dr- to drop him off, right? And then he's like, I'm mad. And he closed his fist like down and he's like, <laughs> mommy, I'm mad. And I'm like, That's go funny. clean your room, bro. Like you yeah. made a mess. Yeah. Go clean it, yeah. you know, but uh, mom's, it's a full-time <laughs> it's job. It's a full-time job. It's hard. Right. We'll be back with our last break and uh, we have some, a couple of more questions. Okay, guys. So, sure. And we are back. Uh, we're done with the parent talk because she's like not ready for kids so <laughs> guys don't come at her with that come no. at her with the ring <laughs> i mean i wouldn't mind a nice a nice four carat ring or something <laughs> she said four carat just like if it's nothing i mean I've, uh, I've seen a nine carat and that's insane like i wouldn't even want that for really? real yeah i've seen that's a nine so crazy. Carat. It's crazy. Yeah. i don't even know i don't even know the difference on the thing like i guess there's a size difference right like so they size, but it's so much more to it i mean you know there's clarity cut color all that that's so but, crazy yeah. she's done her research oh yeah, yeah. i'm pretty sure <laughs> yes <laughs> all right so anything that you have coming up in the future mm-hmm. like future investments future businesses yeah. yeah yeah so um one of the biggest ones which i've already kind of announced is the franco developments um my instagram franco developments basically there i'll share more of my real estate projects okay um i have this huge real estate project literally 1.2 million dollars so people ask are you a millionaire no i'm in a million dollars in debt (laughs) 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 yeah (laughs) crazy but um you know you gotta risk a lot of money to make money so I'll, i'll definitely get there but yeah this project is really really big um literally we're gonna start very soon and i can't wait to show that and i mean i'm talking about it now but i really didn't want to talk about it until i start Mm -hmm. um but it's gonna be here within the next couple months and i'm gonna actually record all of it like the entire process okay um so that's gonna be really really cool um but for now my other business venture is the franco sports caps and we are literally going after a 64 million dollar company and we are on fire like me and my brother we're we're going all out so one of our first collaborations is with ashton martin um, because this hat that we've created and designed it's very high quality and um, there was a lot of designing behind it i mean there's a, a immense amount of like research behind it as well so the ticket price is a little higher it's I mean, it could be for everyone, but ultimately, you know, we want to get that higher volume. Yeah. So Ashton Martin is actually one of our first ones. And I'll actually show you the hat. It's so nice. cute. Yeah. Yeah. So this is um, called our sports mode. And as you can see, it's all branded by us. You'll see Franco here. You'll see Franco right there. And then uh, Franco there on the inside. And like, this is literally going to be our legacy. Like this is our last name with Ashton Martin. And it's yeah. soon going to be with a bunch of other big companies as well. So this is a collab that we did. It's a DB707. This is for the revealing of the new model SUV, which is actually going to be the fastest SUV on the market. And they use the Franco hats. Yeah, so it's really <laughs> so cool. Crazy. And they ordered a shit ton. So everyone's going to be walking around with this hat. Not just with the Ashton Martin name, but with the Franco name. So this is a really, really, really big thing. And we're going hard. Like this is going to be our revealing of our sport cap. And we're like not playing any games. And we're spending a lot of marketing dollars to really broadcast what we've created. And um, yeah, we only plan to go even higher than this. That's so crazy. So it's, just to make it clear, it's like the 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 blank the actual hat, right? Is the so, is y'all? Yeah, yeah. So the blank <clears throat> is obviously ours. This is the uh, Franco hat. So you know, if you actually hold it, it's really heavy. So the visor okay. is very high quality. The micro um, fiber material it's moisture wicking, so it's really good for sports. That's why okay, we call okay. it sport yeah, sports, mode. Yeah. So it basically wicks away the sweat um because of the holes it's mesh it's very like you know you doesn't get air in there Mm -hmm. um and ultimately again just it's branded by us it's our name written all over it and it's very high quality i mean you see that puff embroidery we used to not be able to do this before so this is a really big deal i'm telling you ashton martin like the actual owner of the dealership Mm -hmm. he said this was the best highest quality hat he's ever gotten he switched over to us completely so this is making 
their account, one of our biggest accounts to date, uh, because they gave up their other vendors. And um, ultimately, I mean, they paid a lot of money for these hats too. I That's will say so that. Crazy. And um, I mean, to get a huge compliment like that from him is just such a big deal. Yeah. Damn, yeah. That's about us though. Like yeah. that your name is just like on it and Yeah. Well, the reason too, the reason why we're doing it is because we're going through a supply chain issue. Like right now you really can't oh, even get there's hats. a shortage and there's everything, a shortage. right? Yeah. So what we did, uh, we're really using this to our advantage and I know it's gonna hit super hard. And these are gonna be maybe some of our biggest years. Like this is our go time. We saw a problem and we're solving it. We already own the custom apparel business, right? All of our machines, we can already customize. So we're at a higher advantage and all of our clientele needs a hat, but mm -hmm. we can't get them anything else. So now you're almost forced to buy this if you need something, here's this, mm -hmm. and we can customize it. So now, I mean, the margins are at our all time high, um, but ultimately I'm just happy that we can provide something at such high quality and then something that's ours. I mean, this yeah. is ours. How long did it take y'all for to design it? Um, the designing part wasn't too difficult just because, you know, there's obviously a lot of things already on the market. We just kind of imitate, Hey, what works, what doesn't, mm -hmm. um, there's just some kind of changes, obviously just kind of like the holes on the hat. Cause everyone wants a mesh hat. Yeah. Um, and usually when you see like the golfers out there, they just, it's all like all fabric. So yeah. you don't really see the holes, mm -hmm. um, okay. on the players and stuff like that. So that's something that we created so that, you know, you get some breathable air in there. Yeah. And this is a joint venture with uh, me with Jerry. and Jerry. Yeah, so okay. we're working together again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I mean, it has to work. We have to make it work because this one we're not playing around. Honestly, I think this, without a doubt, I really think we'll make a million dollars on the first year. A hundred percent. That's really? so crazy. A hundred percent. Yeah. And so this has already started. This like has already, already started. Okay. It's already started. We just did our first collab with <clears throat> Ashton Martin. That alone was definitely in the high thousands. So we're looking for more businesses to target that will make us hit those kind of numbers um, and go from there. Like quantity wise. Or? Quantity wise, we're, oh, we do nothing under a hundred. Okay. Okay. So it has to be at least a hundred at a time. They ordered over five. Oh, oh shit. So we're talking about a lot of hats yeah that's dope so who are you going after like your current clients or i have a whole list so me and jerry are working on a campaign of the clients that we're going to target that will order no less than 100 okay because yeah. usually like i i see a lot of companies that you guys have mm -hmm. um they would usually go with like the whole richardson's and all that right yeah so but they can't get them they can't yeah. get them so we're <laughs> actually coming up this isn't just our own like the only one that we've created this is one of my favorite ones and this is the one that we're really going to hit hard because this is on a very luxury like um tier okay um and this is my favorite one actually this was called jf 194 because uh of my year in 1994 so we called it after that, but now we're renaming it to just sports mode. Mm. Yeah. But it's just so cool. It's so personal. Like, this I is know. ours. This is ours. Like, this is my legacy. Like, look, it's Franco and Ashton Martin. And, and it's the detail, you and know? And the detail. And like, this is what I want to be known for. Like, me and my brother, this is all like, I mean, mostly Jerry, I will say that. He's the idea. He's like idea. watching. He's like, yeah. you better say yeah. my name. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> He has a higher percentage <laughs> in this business than me. The girls are going to be like, what? <laughs> no, that's so funny. But a lot of girls come after my brother. Not gonna lie. <laughs> but he's taken. He's definitely taken. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. she's not, though. So uh, I'm not. Hey, I'm so <laughs> oh man i'm only like i know you'll be surprised like girls actually they, they 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 be shooting their shot just as hard as a guy would i think the whole time <laughs> we've been together i think i probably got hit on by more girls than guys really yeah because i feel like a lot That's of like crazy. you know i feel I like know. a lot of well, the girls <laughs> my girls the girls that like i've told you about oh maybe and I but i feel like a lot of the guys that like are surrounded like by us like know we've been dating since like high yeah, school you know yeah. so it's i mean like, even when i was dating someone like they wouldn't even approach me anymore yeah like, so i feel mm -hmm. like it's rare when i do get approached by somebody but it's just because you know there are uh, probably strangers that didn't even know you that much yeah so like i that. think it's just more like the respect you know and yeah. i don't put myself out there either like where it's yeah. like yeah, yeah no, that's totally understandable yeah. yeah jerry doesn't either if you look at his instagram he's super low-key that he day. is right he like, doesn't care for any of that no attention he doesn't really care to show out or anything like that like yeah. he lives his life he's good he's really honestly loyal and devoted to his girlfriend which i love and admire and he just lives his own life 
That's me good. on the other hand. <laughs> it's like different the... story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, talking about oh, because I was gonna say like I'm supposed to have we're supposed to have Jerry too. So I kind of yes. want to get him to get the other half because I kind of look at y'all like a collective. I know y'all yes. are doing like y'all's own things. Yeah. But I do look at y'all like as a collective. So it'd be yeah. cool to hear his side. Yeah. Of growing up and yeah, and yeah, yeah. especially because he's younger and everything. So he is. Yeah, but I, I know. I mean, I've heard him talk a lot about. <laughs> His upbringing and just like having older siblings and what that means to him. But you'll be surprised to hear how mature he really is. And I really want people to hear that and see that because, you know, he just he didn't take anything for granted. And if anything, he works harder, strives more, dreams bigger than all of us because he sees us so high that he just thinks he needs to surpass us. But I'm like, yo, you're this (laughs) age. I swear you probably have more than I do. I swear. Yeah. 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 But it's so. good to see that as siblings that y'all are working together, motivating each other yeah, and it's just you can fall on And we each enjoy other, together you know? everything like we're all good, yeah, for sure. Which is yeah. like not not an everyday thing that you get to see, especially when you're in business with family, you know. Oh yeah. It doesn't always like work out like that, you It know? doesn't. No, it's tough. I don't know if I would recommend it. Um, it takes a lot of work, but like I said, the only reason why it does work is cuz me and Jerry are a dynamic duo like there's certain skills and attributes that he has that I just don't. And so, yeah. and he knows that. He knows that. He will talk about that. I know that. So we just, we have to work together because it works. Yeah. yeah it works. We get so further along. I can't wait until y'all see this campaign. I think he just sent it to me because he was blowing up my phone. And like. <laughs> oh, because you said they were uh, they were working on something, right? Yeah, like, yeah you said they were making a video, right? Let's see if I can. Like, let me see. The perfect sports car. Me and Marjorie. Me and Marjorie. <laughs> Utility, 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 precision, precision. It looks really cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, just wait for it. Yeah, they're He's gonna really be like, working. why'd you post that? You know, I like. know. Oh yeah, probably it's just a little snippet. But it's um, we're tailoring luxury, and again, like that, it's sports cars and everything like that. So I think we have like a British man and his accent, and everything. <laughs> yeah, doing yeah. The that's video, that's so. really like. Yeah creative it's going like above and beyond well you you have to know your audience and we do and we've done the research i wrote the script i'm not Mm -hmm. even a writer but i (laughs) was there i wrote the script yeah and i came up with every well everything on that part and so you're you're gonna see it a lot of it is it really purely is us and we put in that work to do it but you know we gathered the right team to do what they're good at and yeah. we found a guy who just has the voice you just do that <laughs> <laughs> just that <laughs> just that and nothing else no i'm just kidding no we did have a designer he actually really did help us out yeah oh that's hard that's mm-hmm. hard yeah all right well i guess we can leave it at that yeah. you know pretty much we covered a lot you know it was pretty cool like knowing you for all these what years already right mm-hmm. so just to know your story and everything is pretty badass so yeah um, I was going to say, uh, what are your Instagram pages where they can find you, you know, follow you and, yeah. you know, stay connected with you? Stay connected, mm-hmm. hit my DMs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, kidding. she only replies if you're going to buy something. Yes, yeah, exactly. place an order. You, place an order. You really want to catch my attention, you know, spend a couple grand. <laughs> you know, just run that card. Even if you don't really need the hats or the just polo. Buy them. Just buy Just start the card, yeah. Um, but yeah, you can definitely find me on my personal Instagram, which is jfrancosliving. And then I have my development company under Franco Developments. And now the new Instagram for the sports caps, I think it's just Franco Sports Caps. And then okay. apparel up. Oh, whoa, that's the biggest <laughs> I one. Oh, I was like, <laughs> wait, Appar- she's leaving. <laughs> apparel underscore up underscore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So any uh, all her information will be in the description below. Yeah. Again, don't mm-hmm. forget to follow you know all her instagrams all especially her personal one because yeah. that's the way <laughs> that, <laughs> that's stays the one that, gets, yeah, that gets a lot of like traction for sure yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. and then uh, again thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like yeah. and thank you for joining us today yeah. for sure and follow the tiktok you know i'm trying to post yeah. all the clips on there you know and everything so yeah, yeah. so again thank you thank coming you through guys. and everything yes. and, and having to talk with us and everything yeah. so yeah okay. right. bye guys peace